isn't the burden of proof on you to prove that there is a God? Why are you making me prove some of your silly claims? You should be doing it. Well, we already addressed the, the issue of proof and the challenges of it in that you can't actually prove truth because truth is prior to proof. Uh, we talked about in the part one, about that in part one. But, um, but see, again, uh, a lot of people like to call themselves skeptics, so-called skeptics, and they use skepticism falsely. And they go around demanding proof from other people for various sorts of things expecting absolute truth to just be delivered to you on a silver platter. Well, that's not going to fly. As it turns out, if you really care about the truth, you need to be willing to actually go and validate it for yourself. That's how this works. So if you're too lazy or you're too skeptical to take on the burden of the responsibility of discovering what is ultimately true about the universe, where the whole universe came from, if you want to cut through all the illusions of social conditioning and everything you've been taught and indoctrinated with in school and by your parents and by religion and by science and by academia and by philosophy, if you want to cut through all that, that's going to be a personal journey that you go on. Truth seeking, it's called. This is the spiritual quest. It's the quest of seeking the truth. This is the ultimate hero's journey is finding the truth. The Holy Grail is the truth. And it's going to take a lot of work from you. And you need to take responsibility for that. Don't expect other people to deliver it to you. I'm doing you a huge favor compiling all this information in such an easy to, to digest and clear cut fashion. By no means am I obligated to do that for you. And by no means am I... Uh, going to bend over backwards and waste a bunch of my time to try to convince you in your stubborn skepticism and cynicism that there is a God. Ultimately, no one can force you to see the truth unless you're willing to go and find it yourself. That's how truth works. Even though truth is true, and in that sense, it's unquestionable, it's very easy for the human mind to ignore or to deny or to resist the truth simply by being closed-minded or cynical or skeptical. Very easy. And that's the whole trap of false skepticism that I've talked about before. See, people falsely assume that, well, if it's the truth, then it should just overwhelm me and I should be uh, unable to deny it. No. <laughs> uh, your mind is very good at denying stuff. It's an expert at it. Your entire life, you've been denying truth. And so... Um, Nothing in the world can prevent you from denying truth. You can take the most powerful psychedelics that revealed the truth to you in minutes, but if you're really adamant on denying it, you can deny it. You'll go through hell, but you can deny it. You can read and watch all the best videos and books about truth, and if you're stubborn, you can deny it. And that's exactly what people do. And I've addressed that in my mini-series on self-deception. You have to really appreciate the power of self-deception. The power of self-deception is total. And in a sense, that is the power of God. So we talk about God being all-powerful. Well, God is so powerful that God, it turns out, is capable of deceiving itself that it's not God. Now that takes real power to be able to do that. But also at the same time, God also has enough power to overcome that deception. But of course, that's going to take some work, which is why awakening is possible. So God has power in both directions. God has the power to fully deceive itself and God has the power to awaken itself through all that infinite deception. And that's the game we're playing here in life. So it's sort of tug of war this battle between truth and delusion.